Hello and welcome to An Evening in Jackson. I'm your host, Christy Turnbow. An Evening in Jackson is a showcase to not only highlight, but also in to enlighten you about your city and the people, places, and things that make your city what it is. We get to talk about events and entertainment, plus food, fun, and fashion. Tonight, we are filming live at Hub City Brewing Company, downtown Jackson, being brought to you by E Plus Broadband. We have two very special guests tonight, Dr. Niles Reddick with the University of Memphis at Lambeth and Mr. Jerry Corley, the owner of Hub City Brewing Company. We're going to be talking to them and sort of get a behind the scenes on what makes these gentlemen who they are and why they call Jackson home and why they love it so much. We're also going to be talking about food, fun, and fashion. What's trending in food for 2019? Seed butters, um, cabbage is king, and also orange wine and beer. We're even going to talk about what's trending for your home. Did you know there was something called Memphis Design? We're going to be talking about Memphis Design on tonight's show. We're also going to be talking about the big, biggest color trends for your home. Um, blush, dusty pink, and bronze. Plus a little bit more on the fashion scene with all the sunshine shades of summer. We'll even be talking about events and entertainment going on right here in the Hub City at, with the Andrew Jackson Marathon, the First Ladies Luncheon, Breakfast for Babies, the Glow Out 5K, and the Jackson Symphony presenting the best of your memories at the Carl Perkins Civic Center. And last but not least, we don't want you to forget one single thing in your backyard that you can take advantage of. You can't be bored in Jackson, so make sure you're getting ready to head down to the Farmer's Market on the weekends, the Jackson Generals, the AMP, the Rockabilly Hall of Fame. Make sure you take advantage of what's in your own backyard. And we'll be back right after this message to an evening in Jackson. At First Bank, this is what we want for our customers and our community. We put family first. We want our community to be first. We put our schools first. We put our business community first. We put our online banking first. We put our customers first. We always put you first. We want you to know what we stand for at First Bank. We put you first at First Bank. Visit one of our locations today. First Bank, member FDIC and equal housing lender. I was driving home. It was about 9 o'clock at night. A gentleman crossed the center line and hit me head on. It took them like six hours to get me out of the car. That's how bad it was. I could feel the blood coming out. I could feel it running down my legs. I remember waking up in the ICU and actually seeing the, the blood hooked up. Lifeline is so important. Without somebody you know, donating that blood, I, I wouldn't be here. I look at life a lot differently. It just makes me appreciate every day. If you see it, if you hear it, if you read it, Sarah of Jackson will beat it. We will meet or beat any dealer's advertised price. New 2018 Silverado Crew Cab. Save up to 14000 off. 2019 Buick Encore starting at 18 dollars New 2018 Escalade up to 19000 off. And save up to seven grand off. 2019 GMC Sierra Crew Cab. Sarah of Jackson. One destination. So many choices. Hello and welcome back to An Evening in Jackson. I'm your host, Christy Turnbow. We're filming live tonight at Hub City Brewing Company in downtown Jackson, being brought to you by E Plus Broadband. Our first guest this evening is Mr. Niles Reddick with the University of Memphis at Lambeth. Hello, Niles. What's one of your proudest moments since you came to University of Memphis at Lambeth? At the, at the campus? Yeah, on campus, um, yeah. I, you know, I think the reopening of the planetarium yes. was a significant uh, event for us. It it doesn't... Um, I call that one of the hidden gems of Jackson. I, I think it is a hidden gem. I think you're right. It You know, we opened that campus, we remodeled it, opened it, got some new technology, right. some new shows. We Last year we ran about 1,500 students from uh, K-12 right. and other groups in through the planetarium and I think it's a phenomenal experience. And I think so many people don't even know it exists. Yeah, and we have shows practically every week, Tuesdays. Okay. Uh, all of that's on our website, okay. uh, memphis.edu and the news section. Okay. It lists all of the different shows and when they are. And the hours and uh -huh. the things that people We do come. like a Friday show every other Saturday or 
uh, every two weeks or something like that. It's right. really worth coming to see. Yeah, right, and um, once again, so many people don't know that it's there mm -hmm. and what an experience they can have that is truly, Absolutely. in their once again, in their own backyard right here in Jackson. That's true. So um, it's amazing that y'all had 1,500 people come through last year. I know, it I'd is. love for us to be able to double that number this year. Yeah, I do would too. Um, we know that um, you do so many things. We're, you're a fellow Rotarian as well. Right. But what are some of your other hobbies that you have? Writing, I, know I guess, writing. is We're probably get to that in a um, minute. Yeah. my only hobby. Um, there's not a lot of time for hobbies. But now you and your family, you travel? We do travel some. And yes. um, my daughter plays tennis and my son plays baseball now and football in the fall. So I spend a lot of time at their games okay, and right. matches uh, in spare time. Um, I'm going to ask you a couple of fun questions. Sure. Okay. What's um, your favorite candy bar? Do you have a favorite? Butterfinger. Butterfinger? Okay. Uh, well, really, as any candy bar is a favorite <laughs> candy bar for me. Um, I shouldn't eat any of that stuff. No. But Everybody's got to have a little something sweet. I, I love them. Reese, I love Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Oh, I know. Almond They're Joy. So good. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'd eat them all every day if I could. <laughs> Switching <laughs> things up just a little bit. Do you have a favorite quote that you sort of, is like your go-to that you share with people a lot? No, not really. No? Um, I think about, there's a lot of quotes that I love. Right. Um, but not really a favorite okay. one. Um, yeah. And because we're going to talk about your writing now. Um, for those of you that don't know, Niles has written 250 stories. Something like that. He has four amazing books. Mm -hmm. um, you brought three of them here tonight. Yeah. Um, for you. For me. Yeah. Thank you. To keep. Um, and I'm gonna, you can read in your spare time. In my spare time, I will make sure. But you know, I love to read, and I try and read, honestly, a book a night. I don't always oh, get wow. to do that. But um, tell us how you really got so passionate about writing and what got you started and uh, just sort of tell everyone about the stories. I learned so much about your passion for your writing and everything when you did the books in Madison County yeah, yeah. Uh, for the Library Foundation last year. And that so was a fun event. It was a great event, yeah. and you did an amazing job. Thank so you. share a little bit of that with us. Your, some of your funny stories and, sure. and how um, you find all these stories. I think I started writing or being a storyteller, really, right. as a kid. You know, I was always lying. Uh, and getting in trouble um, <laughs> as a kid. Surely not, and, no. and I made up stories, you know, and told them around town, and people would call my mother and, you know, did, you know, we're sorry this happened, that y'all got drunk and had a fight, and mom's like, oh my God, no, he's no, at it again, yeah, yeah. you know. So I always made up stuff, and um, I, it really wasn't until high school and college that I started to seriously think about writing and um, and then just through the years continued to do it really just for fun right. and didn't publish anything until the 90s okay. um, and then started really focusing on stories right. and um, but what an amazing accomplishment my goodness you've published 200 over 250 stories yeah and I didn't so. even know that until this year when I counted them in the, I mean, and you have such a gift. <coughs> Thank you. So, and then your four books. Is there one of these gifts that you brought me tonight that is one of your favorites? Um, and where can people find these? We also need to let people know that as well. Well, we have them at the Lambeth Campus okay. Bookstore, but you can get them from Barnes & Noble or okay. Amazon or any place like that. Um, you know, they're so all I favorites in, a, in, in their own little way. Right. Um, I'm probably partial to the stories uh, simply because I've written so many and I continue to write so many stories. Right. And you're working on a book currently too, aren't you? Or did uh, you just finish one not too long well, ago? Well, I have another book of stories okay. that will be out next year. And um, I just love making up stuff. And, and you know, <laughs> it's crazy stuff. I mean, things that just happen on a daily basis. Right. They're not really phenomenal stories, but they're just... I like humor. I like a lot of humorous stories, you right. know. Um, but I, you know, I do write some serious stories too. So they could be anything from the roadkill book, you right. know, was taken about my aunt who collected roadkill, made art, <laughs> which I, I love. And, you've and done, um, the, the night at the Books of Madison County, you had yeah. us all just laughing hysterically when you were talking about that. But make sure everybody gets this book. So, And, you know, then the newer book is Reading the Coffee Grounds, which is a yes. collection of 
stories and there's a wide range of stories. Some of them are serious and some of them are very humorous stories. Well, it just impresses me when somebody has such a, uh, a gift like you do, um, whether you started out as a young child telling tall tales, so to speak, um, and what you've accomplished with that. Yeah, and so. I just, at my son's baseball game, Saturday, and then again on Monday or Tuesday night, I wrote a story Saturday and another one while I was at the baseball game. I had my little iPad and I was just pecking away, away yeah. you know, when the other team was playing or it right. was they weren't doing anything, right. you know. So they just come to you all the time? Yeah, <laughs> um, pretty much. Do um, you have a book that is your favorite besides your own that you've written? Um, you know, I love my novel, Drifting Too Far From The Shore. I think it's probably, from a like a literary standpoint, I think right. it was the best thing I've ever written. Um, it, you know, but it's a, it's a very complicated kind of story um, beneath the surface. It has a kind of surface level narrative that's a beautiful story about an elderly woman, you know, who's really at the end of her life and is um, resolving problems you know, through a, a variety of relationships and things that happen. Um, and it's really a great story. Um, I think that um, it took about a year to write. I don't know if I'll do another novel. novel uh, yeah. I think about writing another novel. I'd like to do another novel. Maybe when I retire in a few <laughs> years, I'll have more time. But you do so many things besides your writing. Um, you also teach some yeah. classes? Yeah, I'm teaching and a film class uh, oh, this semester. I do one yeah. class per term. One class per term. Um, okay. In the fall, I'll do a literature class. Okay. Um, but right now, I'm doing film, and we last night we covered horror films and sci fi, <laughs> and I just think horror films are hilarious. You're right, yeah. Especially old ones like the. We watched The Birds last night. Okay, but now some of them scare me to death, too. Yeah, but they're just. They're, they're really things about ourselves, you know, yeah. that we kind of are projecting, but... I've got um, one more quick question yeah. for you. Um, what is the one thing that you love about Jackson? Can you name just um, one thing, or is there too many? Other than the brewery. The, the brewery, <laughs> where we're here tonight at Hub City, yes. Uh, you know, I love downtown. Downtown's amazing. Um, I love downtown a lot. Um, I love the Lana community. I think yes. it's a beautiful community. I think Highland Avenue with the churches and the trees and everything, everything is, yeah, yeah, it's just a beautiful place. And we'll be right back in a few minutes. If you see it, if you hear it, if you read it, Sarah of Jackson will beat it. We will meet or beat any dealer's advertised price. New 2018 Silverado Crew Cab. Save up to 14,000 off. 2019 Buick Encore starting at 18,999. New 2018 Escalade up to 19,000 off. And save up to seven grand off. 2019 GMC Sierra Crew Cab. Sarah of Jackson. One destination. So many choices. I'm Mark Taylor. I'm the owner of Renew Biomedical Services based out of here in Jackson, Tennessee. We're a provider of uh, biomedical services for medical professionals. At Renew Biomedical, our use of telecom is of utmost importance. We have to reach our customers in a timely fashion so we can diagnose and service their equipment needs. So e Broadband allows Renew Biomedical to connect effectively with our customers in whichever way they choose, via email, phone, Skype, teleconferencing, and any way you can imagine. It felt like my heart would explode. It finally, I just uh, blacked out. To say the least, it was terrifying. I had three uh, open heart surgeries, which actually saved my life. And during that time, I had lost a lot of blood. Without that blood that was given to me, uh, I would not have survived the surgery. It is the only reason that I'm here today. Life is great. Lifeline, our community's blood bank. It was because of your blood that you donated that actually saved my life. At First Bank, this is what we want for our customers and our community. We put family first. We want our community to be first. We put our schools first. We put our business community first. We put our online banking first. We put our customers first. We always put you first. We want you to know what we stand for at First Bank. We put you first at First Bank. Visit one of our locations today. First Bank, member FDIC and equal housing lender.
And we're filming live tonight downtown Jackson at Hub City Brewery. I have our next guest with us, Mr. Jerry Corley. Hi, Jerry. Hi, how are you? I'm good. Good evening. Yeah, good evening. Thanks for having amazing, me. Amazing, amazing place, Hub I, City Brewery. I appreciate it. It's exciting. It's very exciting. More exciting tonight because y'all are here yes. and cameras and lights and all cameras that. Cameras and so. lights yeah. and all that. Yeah. Um, you know, we're just going to have a conversation. We're just going to, I'm going to talk to you just a little bit and ask you a few little questions. Um, you've been in Jackson 20 plus years, but the one thing I think that stands out the most and what I'm so excited to share with people is how passionate you are, not only about Jackson, but especially downtown. You know? Well, yeah, I mean, I appreciate that. We, uh, I've been here 20 years. Um, somebody asked me earlier today um, if I had been with, with, uh, with Outback a while back, and I said, right. gosh, it seems like two lives ago. Yeah, two lives ago. It seems like ago. a long time. So, yeah, anyway. Yeah, but you also um, mm -hmm. have another business here in downtown Jackson, yep. Rock and Dough Pizza. Yeah, Rock and Dough. And that's how all this came about. Yeah. That's how all this came about. So, um, we uh, obviously uh, got into the pizza business uh, downtown and we expanded into uh, Memphis with Rock and Dough. Uh, we're fixing to expand into Nashville, right. and so we needed a we needed a way to get to get all the great beer we were making at Rock and Dough to those places. So Hub City kind of came about. In Hub City, and what's amazing to me is you took an historic building downtown, mm -hmm. um, and I know you came to Rotary a couple of weeks ago and you shared the yeah. story about you know the building and the things that you found, and it was a car dealership at one time. Yeah, yeah, it was um, a car dealership, 1916. Um, 1916. 1916 is when the building was built, and uh, it's just a beautiful old building. Oh, it's, it is. It's 40,000 square feet, uh, 20,000 up, upstairs, 20,000 down, but. Uh, you know, the, the car dealership was the first thing it was, and then um, it turned into a commissary. Um, and we, we know, like, in 1945, they started bringing groceries into the building and conveying them upstairs and storing them upstairs. Right. And when we bought the building in uh, this last year, the conveyor belt was still upstairs. It was a 28-foot-long steel conveyor belt. They just dismantled it, pulled it upstairs, and right. left it. And so there's we, a story that you've done with this that's conveyor right. belt, that's right. too. So we reconditioned it and said, you know what, that's going to be our bar top. So right. we've got a 28-foot-long conveyor belt that's been in the building since 1945. Right. So super cool. Um, and just that history, the history of yeah. Jackson and, and all that we truly have in our backyard. You know, and for those that don't come downtown, how they so need to, not just to come to Hub City, mm -hmm. but, you know, to go down to the Amp and, you know, just there, so many other things that we have here. There are. There's a lot of things to do, and we've actually heard that so many times over the right. past few weeks. Like, and we, we literally had one person say, I haven't been here in a decade. I haven't right. been this side of town in a decade, and Isn't I'm glad amazing? to come down. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there's a lot, you know, there's a lot of things happening down here and a lot of right. good things. and. And you're a big part of that. Um, mm -hmm. Something I think that is so fascinating is that you've got a bowling lanes, bowling oh, yeah. lanes here inside Hub City. Yeah, and I, I hear they're hard to bowl on. I haven't bowled on them yet. Oh my uh, goodness, so I'm gonna have to try it out. Yeah, we'll have I to try tonight. it out. Really. Yeah. yeah, we've got four lanes, and um, you know we're we're a fun family, friendly, and that's something right. that we've talked about a lot. Where, Bringing the whole family down and, yeah, and, and having a big time here, you know, because you are downtown, you can come here and stop in and do yeah. some bowling. And we, we open Sundays at 11, and, you know, people after church, they'll go eat, they'll come in, they'll bowl. I mean, yeah, we, we make, and, we make yeah. beer in the back corner, but, right. you know, it's no different than going to a restaurant. Right, you and know? you've got such a great event space, too, so yeah. for those people looking mm -hmm. for a great place to hold events, yeah. you've got it. Yeah, we've got that. We've got several concerts that we've, uh, that we've planned. Um, We've so got, even more entertainment for right here in Jackson. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and we've got a we've got a whole list of stuff we haven't put out there yet. But um, but we're trying to get people to come in and and we're trying to bring in people that will bring more people to the area. Right. For right. instance, like you know somebody may drive from Memphis or Tupelo to stay the night in a hotel and right. you know have dinner while they're here and then and then see the right. show and then go back. So that's what that's what we're trying to do. Well, and that's sort of the whole reason behind the show um, and why. We call it an evening in Jackson, yeah. um, and why I'm so excited that E Plus Broadband got behind it um, is because I'm trying to really showcase and enlighten people how much there truly is to do in their own backyard, yeah. and having people that are so passionate about helping Jackson grow and to prosper, um, not just by having businesses here, but wanting that sense of community, yeah. you know, and having them come downtown and hang out with their families and do so many of the great things. Um, one, so. one of the things we're doing right now is we're adding, um, we have the half acre yard out right. to the left that the train bed used to go through and we're redoing that and putting grass down and all that. So 
You can uh, come bring come a blanket and hang out. And hang out. Yeah, yeah, just sit outside. You can throw the football. You can let the dog walk. I mean, there's so much you can right. do. You know, and to so. have a true downtown experience yeah. right here at Hub just City. Come hang out. Yeah. So. Um, I know you're so passionate about Jackson, just like I am, and I know you mentioned some of the live entertainment that you've got coming. Is that something that you're planning on doing, like once a month, or? Yeah, somebody again asked me that earlier today, and we, I don't have a set schedule. Right. All I know is I want to do like 12 or 14 shows okay. a year, um, because our number one goal is to distribute beer. That that is why we're here is right. the beer distribution first. Secondly. Um, we want to provide a place where people, when they do come downtown, there's something to do, they can have fun, they can hang out. We don't want to take away from any restaurant business in town, right. which is why we have such a small menu. Right. We don't want to stay open until one in the morning because we don't want to take away from those businesses. We're getting people in and trying to get them out of here by 10 o'clock at night. Um, and and so, once again, that sort of goes with the family thing, too. Yeah, Bring yeah. we're not family. a bar. Yeah. We are not a bar. We're, right. a, we're an event center. We have a tap room. Uh, you can get something to eat. You can bowl. Uh, but we don't. We have to be very careful with our business strategy because right. we, want, we want those bars around town to go, yeah, I want to carry their beer because right. they're not competition to us. We don't want to be. We want to close at 10, and those people that want to stay out past 10, can go somewhere and have a good time. Right. We just want to get them fired up, get ready them fired to go. Up and ready That's to go. it. Something else that I think is so fascinating that all the beers that you have here at Hub City are also named after Tennessee yeah. and Jackson and West yeah. Tennessee. Can you share a few of the names with us? Yeah, so I, I was going to, you know, I wanted to walk up here and, and hand you a beer. Our, right. our, our first yeah. beer that, I, that my favorite is Hey Y'all. Hey Y'all. Uh, oh, and now it. I hear yeah. it all the time when I hear somebody walk in and go, Hey Y'all. I hey, go, Yeah, that's a great name for a beer. So, uh, so that's hey y'all, and then we've got uh, my second favorite name is probably the uh, the big talking brown, big and brown. that name that name came from the Johnny Cash song going to, going to Jackson, where she says go yeah. ahead you big talking man, yeah. and so this big talking brown kind of uh, kind of played off that because I think we have I know we have a strong history of music in yes, the city, such a strong history. and things like you know that they they don't really get incorporate into things enough so right. we're this building's old it's been here a while uh, we've got you know Carl Perkins um, that that was from Jackson and and um, uh, there's just so much the rockabilly the hall of fames across the street right. um, there's just a lot of things that we want to incorporate into it oh yeah and um, one of the things that I mentioned the last show um, was the rockabilly you know museum and how so many people don't um, or never been, yeah. you know, and we have people from all over the world that come for, you know, for that very reason, yeah. um, or to find out more about Carl Perkins and, and that kind of I'm thing. I'm glad you so. said that because people literally come from all over the world yes. to see, you know, where he played, where he lived, right. and they do the same thing for Rockabilly, and those yes. guys that, I have a good buddy whose dad was a Rockabilly guy, and, and, and up until last, you know, I guess two years ago before he passed, people still came from other countries right. and would knock on his door and go, hey, would you sign, sign this, this for yeah. me? And it's right here and nobody appreciates and it. I always nobody say you cannot it. be bored in Jackson no matter what. You just have to take advantage of what's here. Um, and so now they can come to a brand new place, the yeah. Hub City Brewery, yeah. uh, bring their family and have such a great time. Um, but I love how you've incorporated not just a historic building, but you've looked at the overall picture of everything. Um, but I think naming the beers after... Yeah. Yeah, you know, so, uh, things yeah. that are so familiar to us are so Holler back was the third one. Uh, and that's actually a train term, holler back. And then we looked at that when we, when we started naming stuff too. So. Well, with Casey Jones and all yeah. of that. Yeah. Um, I cannot say thank you enough, but I do have one more question for uh -oh. you. What's the one thing that you love the most about Jackson? Oh, gosh. Um, I love that there's so much opportunity to do something. Yes. Because... Everybody knows I've I've changed directions, right? And this community has allowed me to do that, and, and I've gone from one to another, and I've I've had restaurants where we've moved two different times, and, and we've opened something else, and we've gotten involved in that, and now we're in this. So I think it's I think it's just an opportunity that you that you get in this yeah, market that you may Jackson. not get somewhere else. And we'll be back in just a few minutes with an evening in Jackson. At First Bank, this is what we want for our customers and our community. We put family first. 
We want our community to be first. We put our schools first. We put our business community first. We put our online banking first. We put our customers first. We always put you first. We want you to know what we stand for at First Bank. We put you first at First Bank. Visit one of our locations today. First Bank, member FDIC and equal housing lender. My name is Mark Taylor. I'm the owner and president of Master Medical Equipment here in Jackson, Tennessee. As we've grown, our bandwidth needs have grown too. With e Broadband, it's allowed us to do more things at once. So even though we're located here in West Tennessee, we have customers both out of the state, nationwide, and internationally that we use e Broadband to communicate with. Email, online chat, telephone, however they prefer to communicate with us. And e Broadband allows us to do that. Now comes one of probably the, my favorite part of the show. We get to talk about food, fun, and fashion, um, and plus events and entertainment going on right here in your backyard. We're going to start off with some food trends for 2019. Now, I know I told you guys last show about some of the weird things. Well, I found some over different things this time. So uh, we all know we love our butter on our cornbread and on our biscuits. There's some new kinds of butter that are coming out in 2019 that are going to be trending very strong, and they're called seed butters. And they're going to be made from sunflowers, pumpkin, and watermelon seeds. So you may have to try some of that, see how that goes on your biscuits. Um, something else, uh, one of the top vegetables, cabbage is going to be king this summer. Um, and be looking for cabbage chips, cabbage lasagna, and cabbage leaf enchiladas. Now I don't know about you guys, now I love some good old cabbage. I don't know about cabbage chips though. One of the top fruits for the summer of 2019 is going to be jackfruit. Jackfruit comes from Southeast Asia and Africa and South America. I've never tried a jackfruit, but I'm sure that if I see one at the grocery store, I'm going to get one and try that. Um, something else that's trending in 2019 really strongly is orange flavored wine and beer. So when you're out and about, you may have to try some of that orange flavored wine and beer. Um, and even some newer trends for water is not just coconut water anymore, it's cactus water and maple water. Some of the fashion trends coming up in 2019, um, I think I told you last time it's a, all about yellow for the spring, well for summer it's going to be all shades of sunshine. So it's going to be the and sunset, the dark reds, the wine color, and the oranges. So make sure you get you some of those sunshine shades. And also there's going to be a ton of bows on everything. Um, and even cycling um, attire and apparel is coming back really strong. So if you remember those bicycle shorts from years ago, well, they're back in style. Um, and one other big trend for your home is Memphis Design. So just right down the road in Memphis is called Memphis Design, and that's when you focus on mid-century furniture with graphic shapes and a pop of a primary color. Some of the events and entertainment that are going on right here in Jackson in your own backyard, you can't be bored. We've got the First Lady's Luncheon on April the 11th. On April 12th, we have Breakfast for Babies downtown Jackson. On April the 25th, we have the Glow Out 5K and One Mile Walk for the American Cancer Society. And April the 13th, we have the Jackson Symphony, Best of Your Memories at the Carl Perkins Civic Center. Um, the last show, I wanted to make sure that I mentioned this again. Don't forget, if you've never been to the farmer's market, head down there on the weekends and get you some fresh produce from right here in Jackson and West Tennessee. And also, it's about time for the Jackson Generals and the AMP to get started. And what an amazing summer we're going to have right here in Jackson. Um, also gave you a fun fact about Jackson, the last show, and that was the Hard Rock Cafe. The very first one was right here in Jackson. Um, by, it was founded by Isaac Tigret. He also founded the House of Blues. So I just wanted to make sure that you knew that. Um, it's been an amazing evening once again right here in downtown Jackson. We've been at Hub City Brewery filming live, being brought to you by E Plus Broadband. See you soon. My name is Mark Taylor. I'm the owner and president of Master Medical Equipment here in Jackson, Tennessee. 
We sell professional medical devices throughout the uh, medical community. Recently, we moved to a much larger facility here in Jackson. e Broadband service and support allowed us to seamlessly move, scale, and grow our operation with little to no downtime. Even though we're located here in Jackson, Tennessee, e Broadband has allowed us to provide top-tier technical support to our customers throughout the nation and internationally.